This is the Be Energy Wear podcast. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. We've come to the end of our second year here at the Be Energy Wear podcast. And what a year it's been! Getting close to 100 episodes, more guests than the previous year, and the podcast has now reached 12 more countries around the world, which means that right now people from almost 30 countries are regularly tuning in. This year, among other things which are related to meditation and self healing, we also continue to explore high sensitivity and talked some more about the sensory processing sensitivity and a highly sensitive trait. Today's episode is part one of the top 10 countdown of 2021, episode number 10 to episode number 6. I'm going to announce them one by one. Okay, so number 10 is All Answers Are Inside. It's about four minutes long. Here it is. Asking questions and getting answers is normal. It's a day-to-day thing for all of us. But it's how we get our answers that's different for each one of us. I know there's a lot of information out there and it's good to be informed, but do we really need to get all of our answers in this way? It really depends on what answers we want to get. But what I can tell you is that even if we are 100% seeking answers externally, the one thing that we really need is to know where we stand in comparison. And for that, we need to know ourselves really, really well. And to really get to know ourselves, we need to go inside and get answers that we cannot get elsewhere. And yes, I agree that there are things we must do externally to gather some experiences. But those experiences are just feedback about who we are. And if we look closely, we will find that out. So many choices we can make daily, but which one of those are aligned with who we are at our core? Unraveling and discovering ourselves, in my opinion, is the greatest achievement in life. And you don't have to agree with me. That's okay. But if you do truly discover yourself one day, you probably won't disagree with me as well. Some say, you are who you choose to be. And that's true to some extent. But is that the real you? In a world where most people still do not get to be truly themselves, Doing things differently is not easy. And when we start getting our own answers, we at the same time start doing things differently. Maybe just a few things here and there at first, but with time, many, many more, until there is nothing else but only those things that we really want to do, things that feel just right. Short-term thinking is still very common as it's easier to act from that place. But long-term thinking is what changes things for the better and brings happiness and fulfillment. Getting our own answers by going deep inside of us and nurturing a good relationship with ourselves is what brings us closer to that. Okay, next one. Number nine is becoming confident. And it's also about four minutes long. There are many ways we can approach becoming confident. But first, I want to pose a question. Are we referring here to being confident when it comes to any particular thing or life in general? Well, it doesn't really matter because if we lack confidence, we have to start somewhere. It all starts with becoming good at something. We first need to get good at something if we are going to apply it to other areas of our life. And it's not even about how good we get at this one thing we choose at first. It's about the knowledge and experience we gain while trying to get good at it. 
And it's also about being able to translate it somehow and use it when learning or getting better at pretty much anything else. When someone teaches you the tools that you can apply to get good results, well, then you know that it's important to have the best tools possible when doing any particular thing. You learn how to listen, you learn how to pay attention, and you learn to apply what you've learned and use it to your benefit. How it all started for me was I first did sports. Well, one in particular. I trained track. I was a sprinter. I started at age 11 or so and trained regularly until I turned 14, at about which time an injury prevented me from continuing. I wasn't bad at sprinting, but I can't say that I was particularly good at it. Average at best. But because I didn't miss a practice and was keen on learning, whenever I would learn something and worked at it, I could see the progress, and I really took note of that. And then when I turned 15, I got my first guitar. And that's when it happened. Everything I had previously learned through training track, I was somehow able to translate into learning the guitar, and I got really good at it. And that's how I got my confidence. After that, I knew that I could apply that same principle to anything else in life. Number eight is becoming successful on your own terms. Here it is. Many past examples of success are people that followed certain rules and made certain compromises, and becoming successful was something that was not a happy experience for them. A lot of those people made the most out of it and gained financial freedom and are happy today. But if you ask them if they would want to go through all of that again, almost all of them would say no. So I have to pose this question. Is that really how success is supposed to be achieved? And is that how we want to become successful? I think today we have different options, and we are the ones that get to choose to become successful while really enjoying the process. In the past, Success was dependent on age, but not anymore. Today, if we are thinking long term, we might be much better off. And if we put in the work and make small steps, we will enjoy the ride and eventually achieve success. We just need to get creative and stay steady in the face of challenges. If we're expecting better results too early on, we might get discouraged and give up. We need to allow ourselves enough time without pressuring ourselves to do too much too soon. And we need to take good, good care of ourselves every step of the way. In the past, I could have said, easier said than done. But right now, things might really be changing in our favor. These days, there is plenty of time to reflect and plenty of time and space to take good care of ourselves. Many people have realized what didn't work in the past and why, and a lot of them are willing to change that. And when we start being true to ourselves, things start to open up for us and new and better opportunities are being presented to us. We just need to keep moving forward and be patient. And let's remove the pressure and know that we're doing the right thing by staying true to ourselves and that we are creating a better life for ourselves. Next one is number seven, your inner compass. Here it is. Today, I am going to talk about how to follow your inner compass. Can you imagine if we would go in the right direction each time we need to make a decision about going left, right, or straight at life's many crossroads, how much better would then our life turn out to be? 
It's like making the best possible decision each and every time. Most say that that's not possible. But what if it is possible? What if all we need to do is to be connected with ourselves and also to really trust ourselves? To me, this is supposed to be normal. Everyone is intuitive and everyone has access to their intuition. So how come that so very few trust that intuition and make decisions accordingly? It's like knowing you need to turn left, but instead you decide to turn right or to go straight. Why do people do this? There can be much confusion that distracts people from making the right decision. So how do we remove that confusion and start making the best decisions possible? Well, I cannot speak for anyone else but myself. So what I can say is that I came to a point where I decided to first pay attention to my intuition and then to practice acting on it. Most people ask me, how do you know if it's your intuition you're connected to? And how do you know that you're getting the correct information? Well, to be able to hear that inner voice or to see that compass clearly, we need to be calm. When we are calm, everything comes to us, and we can then read things right. After that, what remains to be done is to always trust the information that we are getting, and that takes practice. And we can start practicing with smaller, everyday decisions. And with time, we build confidence and start applying it when making bigger decisions. Being connected with ourselves and spending quiet time with ourselves is important. I would also recommend to learn to meditate. It's much easier to listen and to trust your intuition when you're centered. This is what is needed to follow your inner compass. And the last episode in part one of our top 10 countdown of 2021 is number six, managing our sensitivities. When talking about sensitivities, first thing I want to say is that everyone is sensitive to something, no exceptions. And if you're highly sensitive, the challenge is even bigger. Knowing your sensitivities gives you an advantage, but you must be willing to observe yourself in different situations and be prepared to respond correctly. If you know your usual response to something you're sensitive to, then if you're not happy with your response, you can figure out a better one. And then next time, you can try that instead. Maybe you realize that there's something there that you need to heal. Two things here to observe. How you're feeling inside and your behavior. So observing how you respond internally and then observing your behavior. That is, what you say and what you do are the two main things. For example, if something makes you angry, will you start yelling or will you simply just voice how you are feeling? Are you going to stay with that feeling or are you going to run away from it and act out instead? If something in your surroundings is bothering you and you cannot change how you feel about it, then a change of surroundings might be in order. If a particular thing cannot be changed and it's unhealthy, then what else is there to do? Providing, of course, that you've already addressed anything that needs healing. But anyway, we're past the time where people would cope with feelings in ways which would harm them and others. Right now, a lot more people are setting a good example by being present with their feelings and using them to heal themselves. They understand that feelings are here to be released. So instead of harming themselves and others, those people are actually helping themselves and others. They get to heal, and those around them get to witness that, and they learn from it. Going back to sensitivities, main thing to differentiate between when it comes to things we're sensitive to is 
if we are really being exposed to something unhealthy? Or is that, whatever it is, just reminding us of something traumatizing from the past? Sometimes our mind can trick us and we start thinking that we're back there again. If there are leftover feelings from the past that are tied to that, we need to feel them and release them. If not, then we must not allow the mind to keep us in the past and suffering. We need to stop the mind right away by realizing, hey, I'm just thinking this. This is not real. This concludes part one of our top 10 countdown of 2021 on the Be Energy Wear podcast. Next time, we will continue with part two. If you like this podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, get in touch with me with any thoughts or suggestions. Message me on Instagram at BE Energy Wear or through my website, BeEnergyWear.com. And please share this podcast with your friends. I'm Bran, and I look forward to being here next year.